Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Let freedom flow. That's our challenge for July. Um, today, it, the challenge is let freedom flow responsibly. Responsibility is on my docket. I pick a virtue card every every so often. I want to say every week, but it's not every week. But when I feel a struggle in my life, then I turn to a deck of cards that are called virtue cards and choose the one that um, is speaking my language and study it and challenge myself in the day to live it. And responsibility came up for me in uh, as a leader, as a, you know, I teach teacher trainings and interact creatively like relationships every day. And as you know, relationships sometimes can be con conflicting where we have conflict in our relationships. Uh, one of the challenges is to take responsibility for what is happening in that relationship and do our part to manage or fix or remedy the issue, you know, whatever that issue is, whether we miscommunicated or feelings got hurt. Um, having the the sensitive maybe hard conversations with family friends co-workers whomever it is that we are having a conflict with important to say i messed up i made a mistake own the mistake own and take responsibility for what is yours and let the rest uh, be on theirs. The other part of that responsibility is to not take on the responsibility that is another's. Their path is their path. Their spiritual awakening or wherever they're at and their responsibility is not yours to shoulder. So you own up what is yours. And in that way, we pave a way or create space for growth. And this is really what's the beauty of making a mistake, isn't that we beat ourselves up. Because I have been there, and I don't know if this has been a challenge for you or not, but let's just be frank and honest for a moment. Um, when I make a mistake and I let myself or someone else down because of an action or inaction, I just berate myself. It's like, Oh, why did you do that? What were you thinking? How how could you let that happen? And um, you know, the next day I wake up, ruminate over it. What I have found more useful, however, is rather than ruminate and essentially shiz all over myself, like just make it harder and harsher. Um, I take it the opposite direction and ruminate on, well, because I did this, what if or how can I promote wholeness? How can I take response ably, responsibility for the action and remedy it and make it into something like better? Perhaps this relationship is going through a shift and the dynamic here is bringing it up to a, 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 a higher level because what we're doing no longer serves us. So bringing it up to a higher level means I lift up my bootstraps and I say, okay, um, I'm willing to show up differently. I am willing to take responsibility for uh, letting myself down or letting you down. And I can see that in remedying this, there is so much more possibility. And this could be a loving, gifted, stronger relationship because of 
what we went what we've been through because of the stumbling block because we had to reach deep down and find out what we're made of so this is the challenge instead of ruminating on what the would have could have should have in responsibility we instead imagine the possibility and the strengthening that can become deepening a relationship, deepening the conversation, deepening our sense of purpose, our relationship with ourselves, our lovingness and loving the whole of ourselves in a purpose, more purposeful way. Okay. It just, it feels better even saying it. So thank you for um, listening to that. On our mat, how do we practice then responsibly? <laughs> Able to respond in the moment what our body is saying. And this is how it happens. We get injured and we go, oh, I could have, should have, would have not done that. Ah, now I've got a knee issue. Okay, so in that moment, we say, you know what? I've got a knee issue. I have a shoulder issue. I have a heart issue. I have this something going on let's just breathe into it breathe into the body breathe into the feeling breathe into that area where we feel the, the pain the heartache the expression physically or manifestation physically of something that's going on the turmoil just breathe into it send the breath to that area and then inquiry what's the possibility for me to understand this more fully and completely and to dissolve the issue to dissolve the pain to dissolve the injured area just play along with me for a moment imagine the full relief and recovery from whatever ails you in this moment. Just imagine if my knee were completely healed, I would be hiking up a mountain, pain-free, chatting, um, enjoying nature, gardening, kneeling, bending over, being with grandkids. Imagine the possibility and freedom from whatever ails you. And then the inquiry is, how can I move in that direction? Not as your challenge today, flow with freedom responsibly. So we're gonna start seated with or without a block or pillow, whatever you want. We will take hands to heart center for a moment, settle in and anchor the inquiry, the what if, the possibility, the beauty, that the challenge or mistake we are going through as we see it as an oops, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Look at it as an oops. This is happening for my growth. What if, what if the relationship is stronger? What if my knee repairs? What if my low back is out of pain? What next step? How can I promote that healing? Let's see what bubbles up for you during this practice. We're going to start with a challenging breath called Kapalabhati. We'll do three rounds of 36. We'll start with a seal of consciousness, thumb and pointer finger together, palms open, wrist at the knee, lifting up through the spine. Kapalabhati looks like this. I'll demonstrate. I'm exhaling through the nose forcefully. The belly is drawing in like ha, 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 ha. 
the in-breath is un an unconscious byproduct. So we don't consciously inhale, consciously and forcefully exhale. This is all done in through the, the nose and out through the nose. So with me, we'll take one full breath together. Exhaling. And then a full breath in. Exhale part way and then begin Kapalabhati, 36 repetitions. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Thirty-six. Exhale all the air out. Breathe in. Hold the breath at the top with the Mula Bandha. So you're going to engage pelvic floor. Uddiyana Bandha, midsection, Jalandhara, just by pulling the chin in and slightly down. Hold breath, hold breath, hold breath. <laughs> and then release the Bandhas, release the breath, exhale. Next set, bring the arms overhead. Seal of consciousness, inhale. Exhale part way and begin. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Thirty six. Interlace the fingers, press the palms upward, exhale all the air out. Inhale. Hold at the top. Bandhas is intact. Release the breath, holding, exhale. Palms together, and the third time, we'll bring the palms behind the head, wrist at the base of the head, press the head back. So we're the third time, we're really getting the ribs to open. Take a full deep breath in, release halfway, and begin. Ten. 20, 30, exhale, hold the air out, breathe in, hold at the top. With the bandhas. And exhale. Hands to the knees. <laughs> full breath in, full breath out. It has to clear our minds. We make room for possibility. Let's dive forward in a nice, sinuous way, forward and back. I'm going to infuse a lot of somatic movement in our practice today and it's it's 9 30 here and here comes the sun every time the sun comes up over the east mountain and i'm pretty close to it so it takes a while for it to come up over the trees as well um, i just hear that song of john denver here comes the sun <laughs> so that tunes in my mind that's a very beautiful sunny summer day and feel the ocean of movement if you're able to practice outside i really encourage that nature surrounding you and being in the natural habitat let's take the arms open 
And then we'll figure eight crossing in front and then figure eight out. Somatic movement for the shoulder. So even though the hands are leading, your shoulder is following in a big way, exaggerated way. Shoulders come up, fold in, come up, fold out, shoulder blades on the back. Just be curious about how much movement you can see in the shoulder. Lots of movement in the arms, but how much shoulder can we increase and make available in the, the girdle, muscle surrounding the shoulder. One more time. And sit upright, hands on the knees and circumduct the torso. You start to open up the hips, the waist. Reverse the action. Let's do a little somatic movement for the spine because this yoga really uh, is attractive for the spine. It's healthy to mobilize in all directions. Now let's take the ribs side to side. We'll see this movement later today in our, our practice. So let's get used to it. We're pulling to the left, pulling to the right, pulling. And it's the rib cage that's doing the work. Those muscles are the intercostals. You'll also feel a lot of the obliques. They're doing the bulk of the work. Intercostals, maybe a little bit. Let's plant the right hand to the floor and reach the left arm up. Now we get to open up the intercostals. Pull side body. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then come back to center, over to the left. Same thing here. This is less of a stretch and more of an opportunity to, for us to connect to the body. We do that through the breath, which would be the major difference between when we do yoga and when we're just doing a stretch. Let's come back to center, really open and let's twist it. So we're coming to the right. And back to center, over to the left. Again, the connection is the breath with the movement, even though it's subtle and feels static. There's some dynamic movement. If we really listen and plug into the body, we'll be responding more ably or able to respond to what the body is saying. Let's unwind, bring the feet behind you, come onto hands and knees. I'll take a little circular pattern here through the hips in a, in a little cat-cow in any direction that you'd like to take. Then come into the uh, somatic movement. What we'll do is come forward here and then we'll take it back and lift the right knee and press down through the heel. So this is a pivot on the ball of the foot. The, the toes stay where they're at. And we just swing or hinge at the hip. Bring the heel to the floor and press all the way back. So what you'll get is a deepening opening through this side body. The QL gets a stretch and we're pushing down into the floor. Uh, I possibly feel a, a lot of movement. Let's just do one side here. So pivot on the toe, come back to the knee, hands and knees. Exhale, press the hands into the floor so the hips come back as the knee lifts. And back to center, try it two more times. This might be a new move for many of you. And let's practice on the left side. The hands don't move. We lift the knee and it turns out as you stretch back. 
coming back to center. Inhale, exhale back. Inhale, knee to the floor, toes turned under, exhale back. Just practice the movement, see what's good, what's happening in your own body, what you're able to do responsibly. And come back onto hands and knees and let's take a first downward facing dog, lifting the knees, pressing the heels down. Taking a full deep breath. And then walk your hands back to your feet. We'll do my favorite hinge. So the hands stay in the middle of the mat. We just keep pushing the mat with the fingers and then hinging with a little bend in the knee. So this is a hips are way back. The hinge is right here in the crease of the hip. And we get this beautiful elongation through the side body and an opening down the posterior chain of the body. And inhale, come to an even hip and hips even with the heel, bend the knees and then roll up. Come to standing here, feet together. Inhale, take the arms overhead. Exhale, arms back down to the side. And in an active stance, that is, let's promote pushing into the four corners of the feet, taking the ball of the foot and drawing it towards the heel, activating the shin, the calf, quadriceps lifting the kneecap. They're also active. The glutes not pinching, but simply pull up through the pelvic floor and tone the navel. So we get some length and space in the back and then bring the shoulder blades onto the back at the same time pulling the ribs in. Now bring the arms overhead. And what you'll feel is more active stance. I call this Tadasana. We're active standing. Exhale, in that same energy, let's forward fold. Inhale to a lift. Take it to a tabletop, hands on the shins. Exhale, bring the chest to the thigh. So it's a full forward fold. And this might be the first one of the day. So give yourself a little leeway. Inhale, come all the way to standing. Actively, palms together, hands to heart. Press into the fingertips. Take the elbows wide and pull the shoulder blades onto the back. So again, very active stance. Retraining the, the, uh, the fascia, muscle memory, essentially the connective tissue. It's all around the muscle to um, engage in a different way. That's what this is about. To occur to ourselves differently so we can be responsible. Bring the arms overhead. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift again. The knees might want to bend a little. Permission granted. Exhale, drop in and down. Pull up with the low belly. Strong arms, reverse the, the swan dive and come up into a Tadasana hands to the heart. Let's take a little shoulder roll. We're gonna to step to the top of the mat if you're not there already and begin some sun salutations. Classic today, inhale, reach, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step back with the right foot. So we're coming into a low lunge. Descend the hips or let the hips descend, but keep strong through the back toe. We're gonna to push through the front foot to straighten the front leg. On an inhale, on an exhale, pull the heel back on the front foot and let the hips descend. Inhale to a pyramid, exhale to a low lunge. Let's do that a couple of times more. Inhale and exhale. When we do this in this manner, we're moving through postures instead of holding them. This is called somatic movement. Let's step all the way back, left foot meets the right, downward facing dog. Inhale, let's do that same movement into a glide into a high plank and then back into a downward dog. 
Inhale, high plank. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, high plank. Lower down, knees and then chest and chin, if you'd like to go here. Or just the chaturanga, regular style. In either position, the shoulders are lifted off the floor, away from the floor. They're leading the heart open into low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Should be no pain in your low back in that low cobra. We're not crunching the low back, we're extending the upper back. Take the right leg to the sky, inhale. Pause as you circle through the ankle. Let's go three times in one direction and then cycle it the other direction. Step forward to a low lunge. Pause, stretch the spine, let the hips descend, exhale. Inhale, straighten the front leg into pyramid. And then again, we'll somatically move through a low lunge into pyramid. With breath, inhale and exhale. Make it fluid, make it like rich and savory. One more time, straighten the front leg. Coming back into a low lunge. Now here, we're gonna give a little pulsation. So the back toe is pressing forward and back. A little pulsation. And we're gonna bend the back knee, push off and step forward, coming to the top of the mat, both feet even, inhale. Extend, exhale, drop in and down. Inhale, let's come all the way to standing. Palms together, hands to heart center. Plug in the shoulder blades. Resist the temptation to just settle, but rather find that active stance again. We're retraining the muscle, muscle memory the fascia to work for us. Drop the arms, inhale overhead. Exhale, forward fold. We'll begin this side with the left leg stepping back on an inhale. Exhale, we're gonna lower the knee to the floor. Inhale, straighten the front leg. So we'll take it back with the hips and then forward into Anjaneyasana. Inhale back to runner stretch. Exhale forward. Inhale pressing through the foot. You can flex the foot and then bring it forward. One last time. Because that feels so good. Pop the back knee off the floor, stepping back, downward facing dog. Inhale into a high push up. Exhale, if you'd like, you can keep the knees off and lower down. Inhale, low cobra. Again, the shoulders peel back. Legs are strong, no pressure in the low back. We workshopped that last week. So if you're com concerned about your low back, I would opt for one of the, the videos that are. Um, from a week ago or even two weeks ago where we workshopped the low back quite a bit. Let's bring the left leg up, rotate through the ankle. We'll go both directions again. And then bend the knee and pull it all the way through. So we're in a low lunge, the opposite side. Gently bring the right knee to the floor. And if your knee is crying out for support, bring a blanket or pillow underneath. Stretch the hips back as you straighten the front leg. And then come forward, inhaling, exhale, straighten the leg and back. So I've reversed the breath. We're inhaling on the forward movement and exhaling on the runner stretch. You see, it doesn't matter. It's just different all good but stay with the breath last time forward pop the back knee up and give a little pulsation through the back toe 
Yeah, and so we're going to revisit this path, this movement as well. And push off with the back foot, step forward. Top of the mat, inhale, hands to shins, exhale, drop in and down. Inhale, let's come all the way to standing. Palms together, exhale, hands to the heart. Shoulder roll. Beautiful job. Inhale, let's bring the arms up. We'll take this to a whole standing sequence. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg steps back, inhale. Spin the back heel to the floor. Exhale, come right up into warrior two. Now, that movement, what we did at the beginning, where we reach the rib cage forward, reach the rib cage back. See how much space or movement you can discern here. How much leeway is there? This is discernment. So we're going back with the right arm, forward with the left, and this happens from the ribs. Now we're gonna add the arm. So the back arm comes forward as we reach forward, circles the head and then goes back. And the front arm comes back and circles the head. And this way we're doing a little lasso. Whole upper body is mobile because the lower body is stable. One more time. Bring the right arm all the way down to the shin. Split the thumb and the middle finger across the joint of the knee, not on the knee, and then hold reverse warrior. Maybe take it a little deeper in the front leg. So this is a strengthening pose. All your faculties engaged. Come back through warrior two, take a side angle. Again, we're still strengthening the front thigh. Fingertips to the floor if you'd like. We're forearm to the thigh. I'm showing the former. Again, three deep breaths. We're building strength and stamina, that's it. So try not to fidget, just hold and listen to the breath. Push into the floor, come back up into warrior two. Now we get some relief for that front thigh, so we're straightening the leg. Reach the ribs forward. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Hand comes to the shin, right arm to the sky. And take your, your high five hand, which is facing me, and bring the thumb up so it's in line with your ear, straight overhead. So it's not back here or turned in any direction, funky like, but right here. And then bring the hand to the waist <laughs> after all that placement. We're gonna rotate the hip towards the floor and then away from the floor. And if we recall last week in our our practice, we did this with the arm. So the arm was up and then we touched the hand to the ankle. If that's easier or you can feel that rotation, let's do that. You can repeat it one more time. Bring the hands to the floor, bend the front knee so the hands are on either side of the left foot. I'm gonna keep the right hand to the ground Extend the left arm to the sky and then rotate in a circle. Big mandala arm forward and then exhale back. As you come forward, here's that pulsation action. So my back toe is doing something different than my front arm. Can you see that? My back toe is propelling me forward and pulling me back with the arm circle. <laughs> it's like padding your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. <laughs> you definitely, you have to think about it. Plant the hand, step back. It gets us out of rote patterning and moves us into something more serving or thoughtful. Downward facing dog, right leg to the sky on an inhale. And we'll bend the knee here and open the hip. A little rotation through the ankle. Now this one is a little different. We're gonna bring the knee in and cross it underneath and then widen it and figure eight all the way up to the elbow. So there's three passageways. And then as you get touch the elbow, circle back up into three-legged down dog. 
Let's do it again. So the knee comes in and crosses in a zigzag position. Touch elbow, knee to elbow, and back up. Last time. Cross, cross. Remember that somatic movement. A lot of it integration into that today. And then step the leg all the way through to the top of the mat. And hopefully that was easier. You're gonna pulse the back foot, push off and step forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Yes, there's a little unevenness. We're gonna do the whole thing on the other side. Patience, my friends. Palms together, exhale, hands to your heart. I will remember the whole sequence. Not to worry, inhale, let's bring the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step the left leg back. Spin the heel to the floor and come into warrior two. You could use a hand or just simply and challenge the abs and come all the way up. The side bodies are parallel. And then as we reach the rib forward, you can see there's a diagonal line and then reach the ribs back, takes it to the other direction. So just see what sort of mobility you have here in the rib cage. Then we'll add the arms to it. So as you reach forward, the back arm circles the head. As you reach back, the front arm circles the head. Don't think about it. Just do what flows naturally. Remember, flow into freedom or let the freedom flow. Response able, which is listening to your own body, responding ably. Let's circle the left arm to the back of the leg, reach the right arm up. These are not new postures, we're just getting into them differently. Ah, just feel the elixir opening the strengthening, the engagement. Uh, keep the engagement of the front thigh, the hamstring, and let's move this into a side angle. So the fingertips touch the floor. Alternatively, the elbow comes to the thigh. Opposite arm is straight up, Bikram fashion. <laughs> and then we're gonna pull ourselves back up into warrior two and straighten the front leg because it's probably a little tired. <laughs> yes, reach the ribs forward, Trikonasana, triangle pose. The hand to the shin, left arm to the sky, hold here. So our thumb is even with the ear, straight up from it. This time as we rotate the hip, let's take the hand to the ankle. Inhale, open. You could reduce this by bringing the hand to the waist and just allowing the hip only to, to rotate. And the same movement through the torso, same steadiness through the front leg, same challenge. Plant both hands, bend your front knee, open to the side wall, right arm lifting, and then extending straight back exhale inhale bring it forward and propel yourself forward with your front toes exhale back inhale mandala arm and then we add the little pulsation the back foot <laughs> again i hope you guys feel awkward this should feel awkward eventually eventually our body will react differently because it will become familiar and it will feel flowy so let freedom flow really comes at uh, concentrated effort step all the way back downward dog come into high plank exhale knees to the floor chaturanga or keep the knees off and just take a regular chaturanga into a full upward facing dog low cobra Let's see what your body's asking for. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's see what you're ready to initiate in the body. That's being ably responsible. From here, the left leg lifts to the sky. We're gonna finish the sequence out, bending the knee and opening the hip. 
And then guiding the knee underneath in a zigzag way. So it crosses under, crosses out. And making a little figure eight as you come forward to touch the elbow and then circle the hip all the way up and around. Do that again. Coming forward, touch the elbow, elbow, circle up and around. A third time. We're high on the balls of the feet. Not really high, but <laughs> high on life. Extend the leg and then step all the way through. I like that. High on the breath, high on life. Pulse the back foot, bend and step forward. Inhale, you did it. We got through both sides. Flat back, exhale, drop in and down. Inhale, let's come all the way to standing. Oh my goodness, hold that forward fold. That feels good, like it, there's a lot more opening now in the posterior chain. We really fully embrace our extension through the back legs in this forward fold. Oh, sometimes it's really nice to pause and see where we've been and, and how we got there. I, I, I couldn't do this at the beginning of class. Definitely have more area or spaciousness in the hamstring. Let's lift gently. Soften the knees, hands to the knees and then roll up. When we're over in that forward fold for a long period of time, can feel a little bit dizzying to come up too fast. So let's take it slow. <sighs> well, facing me, top of the mat or middle of the mat, whatever we're, is working for you. We'll do some standing sequences, um, shifting the weight to the left leg, a revisit of Vrikshasana, tree pose. I'm gonna come at, at it from a different angle. So we'll practice once and then we'll do it once. So you're popping the right heel off the ground, flick the toes, and then press the heel back down. Flick the toes, press the heel back down. Strengthening the feet, strengthening the toes. You come to the ball of the foot, press up onto tippy toes, and at the very end, your, your toes do the action of lifting the, the foot off the ground. So if you feel challenging to your calf. Let's do the other side. A foot strengthener. So we come to the ball of the foot, spread the toes. This really prevents hammer toes as well. And the arch of the foot is getting a stretch right here. Then we'll curl the toes into the mat, promoting that lift all the way onto your tippy toe and then flick it. So your toe lifts up at the end, press back down. Let's try it again. Keeping the ankle in a direct relationship to the second, third toe. That's the challenge. Two more. Last one. Press the heel down. Awesome. Go to the first side again. Pop up onto the toe. And now we're going to glide or turn the knee in and then trace a figure eight with the big toe. So the little toe comes out and around, the big toe comes out and around. The challenge here is to hold your balance. You're swinging the hip. Does this look familiar? We just got through doing it on the floor and we're just doing it standing. Let's try it on the second side. So you pop the knee, come to the ball of the foot, lift off gently and then draw a figure eight. It's super helpful if you have a wall to hold yourself on the wall. And even the action of me putting my hand out and pretending there's a wall helps keep me more stable. I like that. Let's go to the first side. Plant your left foot, right foot, heel comes off the ground. We'll just take one figure eight, lift the knee, take a hold of the ankle, and we're in tree pose, Vrikshasana. A nice gentle way to open the hip, <sighs> find stability in tree pose. Any variation with the hands, I'm going to vary my gaze. So I'm looking forward and then 
maybe not quite at the sun. I'll just keep my gaze steady forward and the arms open. But if you'd like to take your, your gaze upward, that's helpful. For me, the sun's right in my eyes. And then bring it back down. And we'll take the second side. So you shift the weight all the way onto the right foot, press down, active stance with the left leg or with the right leg. Remember, our our muscle has a memory. We want to activate over and over until it becomes a habit. So you lift the knee, figure eight, the foot, maybe once or twice, and then bring the knee up and the foot glides gently to the inner thigh, hands to the heart, open through the chest. Take your gaze forward. Big breath in, big breath out. Any variation with the arms, with the gaze, and even with the placement of the foot. So the foot could be upper inner thigh, it could also be mid thigh. You skip the knee, you could go below the knee. And then even the toes or on the calf or the toes to the floor, we have more stability. And come back down, release and shake it out. We'll do a little somatic movement. The arms in this next progression will start overhead and then they'll circle around towards the right and under to the left, that's it. And then we'll bring it back down, circle up, Roller coaster style, all the way colossal style to the right. Exhale down, inhale around. Exhale to the left. With the arms, we're just doing a circle, that's all. And they pause and then they reverse the action. So they come to center. Your right leg is gonna come around behind the left as the arms circle to the side. So the back foot, the arms are reaching in the direction of the back foot. Come back to center. Feet and arms are in Tadasana, active stance. Circle around. Arms are following the flow of the back leg. Inhale, center. Exhale around. Let's just take it in a flow. Inhale, center. Exhale around. Inhale, and if nothing else, just stay with the breath. Touch an elbow to the knee this time, so you're gonna drop down. Inhale, overhead, drop down. Elbow to knee, that makes a curtsy with the back leg. Back knee is bending, keep it going. Again. To the first side, as we come around, pause with the elbow on the knee, reach down with the right arm, and then touch your back foot to the hand. So we're actually shifting the weight to the left hand, right foot, or let's see, left hand, right foot. No, right hand, left foot. <laughs> and we're touching opposite hand to foot here. Good, plant, and then circle all the way up and over. Hold. I know I'm in the shadow here. Come around. Both arms overhead. Exhale in the other direction. Elbow to knee. Pause. And then we'll touch down with the left hand and lift the left leg. Touch hand to foot. Hand to foot. Hand to foot, root down, and bring your right hand to the thigh, left arm circles. And we end up in this beautiful open half moon shape. Release the arms and come back to center. Okay, we'll go that out. A little brain gym. The movement and connection that we get through breath, mind, and body helps us feel more integrated 
So keep practicing that, even though it's challenging, keep practicing that. Come to the top of your mat and we'll finish this out with our a, a challenging balance, which is a revolved uh, half moon, okay? Inhale the arms overhead. Active stance, exhale, forward fold. Awesome, go as deeply as you can. Inhale, step the right leg back, spin the back heel to the floor. Come into uh, Trikonasana. You press down through the front leg, open to the side wall. Heart, chest, happy here. Bring your right hand to the waist and we'll simply go on an adventure ride, bending the front knee, coming into half moon or crescent. Ardha Chandrasana, the left arm reaches forward to a, a block or the floor, the right toes topping down. And now we'll lift the right leg and then lower. Inhale, lift, keep your gaze steady at the floor. When you feel you've created a balance and a grounding, then lift the right leg and hold it in the air. So it's, the foot is a little higher than the hip, not way higher and not lower but even and slightly above, maybe an inch or two. And then move your gaze. So we're possibly challenging our balance here. Arm. Let's bring the right arm to the floor and shift the responsibility of the holding up to the right hand. Square the hip, there's that rotation again. Bring your left hand to the waist. Extend out through the back toe lift your back leg has to take responsibility for itself it's going to hang so if you feel it lower than your hip use the hamstring lift it up yes and that is powerful it is strong it is fatiguing for the hamstring to do that keep it elevated and then it's a nice easy transition to bend the front knee and lightly touch down so we're in a low lunge bring the right arm back gently bring the back knee to the floor Ah, and breathe. So all those transitions, very slow and controlled. Walk your left foot to the outer edge of your mat. And a gentle opening so you can press the, the hand inside the knee and do a little hip release if that's um, a possibility. And then we're going to shift the weight forward more. So we're off the kneecap and onto the quad as so you bend the back knee. Squeeze the hamstring to bring the heel a little closer. Left arm reaching. Some of you are gonna Charlie horse, that's okay. You'll feel that in your, your hamstring here. As you pull it in. That might be a deficiency in minerals or an overworked or underworked hamstring. So we're gonna bring the arm around, touch the foot and gently coax the heel in towards the glute. Ah, where are you feeling this? Front body, your quads, your hip flexors, absolutely. Yes. If this is a strain on your knee, and for some folks that won't feel very happy, you're gonna do the same thing. See the same leg is bent on the ground. And I'm just gonna take the same hand to foot and draw the heel in. So where there's a will, there's definitely a way to make this work for your body. And take the opportunity to decipher, discern what's best for you today. That's really taking responsibility. And release the leg. Step your front leg all the way back. We'll take a downward facing dog. Inhale to a high push-up. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, complete the vinyasa into downward facing dog. Right leg to the sky. We're gonna step it all the way through. A lot of freedom here we've created through our whole class. Push off with the back foot, step forward, inhale, half lift. Exhale, drop in and down and inhale, come on all the way to standing actively palms together hands to the heart Woohoo! that took about two minutes so we're going to take the second spin on the other side side and cycle through inhale arms overhead exhale forward fold 
Inhale, step the left leg, back edge of your mat, spin the heel to the floor and come into a Trikonasana. Hand to the shin. Uh, opposite top hand to the, the waist, right here. We pause for a moment. Then we're gonna bend the front knee, shift the weight over the front leg, plant the right fingertips to the floor or a block, and then just raise the back leg and tap. Just a couple taps. And when you feel comfortable and confident in your balance, that might be on a wall or not, you're gonna raise the left leg to just above hip height. Turn your gaze to the side. Ah, oh, yes, and that's half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Bring the top hand to the floor as you rotate the hip. And then we're gonna transfer the weight to the left hand and release the right hand, it comes to the waist. The whole time your back leg stays elevated, <laughs> it's gonna wanna wander towards the floor like that. So keep it lifted. It requires a tone in the belly, full cooperative effort of the body, full freedom to elicit the strengthening and adamantly um, charge the body all the way up. Bend the front knee, reach back into a low lunge, pulling your left hand back even with the foot. And then gently bring the back knee to the floor. You made it. I was Ardha Chandrasana and then Parvita Ardha Chandrasana or Revolve Half Moon. We'll take the right foot out slightly. Gently open the knee. Ah, beautiful. If you feel like you're on your kneecap, pull or drag the back knee forward, then bend it. So we're on the quad, off the knee. Okay, if that's a comfortable position for you, stay here. Okay, otherwise, take it to the floor and do the opposing, that alternate stretch for the quad where you're lying on the ground. I'm gonna show this one. I guess I didn't show it last time. Right arm reaches forward and then it rainbows. We're making a trajectory all the way to the foot. Did we make it? There it is. Okay, push the foot into the hand and then draw the heel towards the glute in the same line of energy as your sit bone. So please don't take your left heel to your right glute. Your left heel comes to the left glute. Your knee is in line with the heel, which is in line with the glute. And promote the hip coming towards the heel for a deeper, um, a deeper sensation in the front body. Ah, and release. Excellent, hands to the floor. Free up the front leg, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, glide into plank, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Beautiful job. Now from here, we're gonna come to a seated pose. I'm gonna do that by jumping my feet through the hands. So you can come to a seated position and, and watch for a moment. I'm gonna show you how this uh, how we build this progression. So my hands are gonna walk back just a little bit. For me, that's, that seems to work better. And I'm getting ready. I'm on the balls of the feet and pressing down, on the balls of the feet and pressing down. And as I come onto the balls of the feet, I'm gonna stay here and just bend the knees and get a little pounce action going. What I'm aiming for is the feet not to the mat, but through the arms. So that's what I'm picturing in my mind, in my head. Exhale all the air out. And pull the feet through. So that's a shoot through. We come into Dandasana. So we all end up here, legs extended. If that's something that you would like to start to progress into, here's a really short tip and everybody can do this to elicit uh, that 
the helpfulness. Okay, so we'll bring the hands, base of the hips. If you have shorter arms and your torso is long, blocks are your friend. You'll push down through the block, lift the hips up, and then pull the hips back as far as you can, and then shoot through. One leg lift, pull the hips back, and then shoot through. Try it. The opposite heel lifts, pull the hips back, and shoot through. And then pull back, both ankles, and shoot through. <laughs> OK, that's our abs for the day. Very taxing. Let's bring the knee in, open to the side. Jhana Shirshasana, and this first one is uh, bringing the torso at the diagonal. So it's um, evenly spaced between the straight leg and the bent leg. We'll lean forward. Keep the straight leg knee uh, heading upward. Make sure it's not rolling back or rolling forward. Uh, it's shining, it headlights straight to the ceiling. And then we'll gently walk back up over now, straight leg. So it requires a little uh, slight twist in the torso, right arm coming around to the ankle or heel. Mm, promote. A deepening with each breath. There's no rush to get anywhere. It is meaningless to force the action. What's meaningful and response able is to breathe and let the breath create a response, a relaxation response in the body that allows it to simply flow with freedom to a deeper level. One more breath. Inhale, lift up and come back to seated. We'll bring your right foot to the knee and then draw your left foot in, making a pinwheel. I'm gonna turn the direction the knees are pointing, the whole torso rotating, hands supporting and then walking forward as far out as possible, bending the elbows, coming down. Mm, this is a full complete practice. Uh, if you'd like to take this practice and do the first half, we're in the sun citations and then take a Shavasana. If you're, you're stuck on time. Just do half of the practice. That would be your full practice. Do the full first 30 minutes full out. That's a full practice. Walk your hands behind you. I know I kind of sometimes get stuck in this arena of I don't have an hour and a half. I don't have an hour and 15. I don't have an hour. I only have 20 minutes. Okay. Take 20 minutes. Walk the hands around. That's your full and complete practice. If you're fully invested in that practice, it will serve you well. Let's come over to the bent knee now and lift up through the spine. Ooh, yeah. Opening of the hip in maybe a different way that we haven't, weren't expecting. It's an inward rotation here. There's a lot of Stretch in the inner thigh, and there might be compression on the outside, so watch that. If it's too much compression, give yourself a seat, a higher seat. Just bring a block or something underneath. And then release the legs forward. Compression is bone on bone. Compression is what we're, we're born with a certain uh, elemental structure to the body. If we have bone pressing against bone, that is compression. There's no amount of yoga that's going to stretch that into something more flexible. That's just an impossibility. So 
the point is don't force it right honor responsible movement in the body so let's take the uh, left knee in out to the side diagonal facing walk the hands forwards you're leaning keeping the knee stabilized upward so the the toes and the knee and the shin up to the sky as well as you possibly can you get to take a couple deep breaths in this more contemplative forward fold breathe to release any tension and build up and especially around here the low back and we'll walk back up to center and bring the foot maybe slightly towards the knee just a touch a little rotation and then leaning forward full head to knee pose janu knee shirsha head asana pose head to knee pose all the way down with breath with fullness and i urge you to watch this video over and over practice it for a solid month there's so many juicy tidbits through sprinkled throughout i promise you it will sound and feel differently every time you watch it one more breath here And then simply pick up the torso, walk the hands back, bend your right knee now, comes around the heel to the glute. You'll see this from a side shot now. And I'm rotating in the direction the knees are pointing. Walk the hands forward. And if you can take it a little bit further, you would walk your hands around behind you, possibly finishing out that beautiful luscious twisting of the upper torso and make sure the breath creates fullness through the sensation and we're not stuck in in something that's not serving walk the hands around they're going to stay anchored to the floor as we come all the way around now we're looking at the right ankle and shin let's upright the torso and root down through the right sit bone it's going to want to elevate so just keep pressing down get the full benefit through the opening of the hip socket here And we'll release that, unwind the knee. We'll take the ankle around and press right foot to left. So now we've got bound angle, Baddha Konasana, cobbler's pose, hands to the ankle, lift up and then lean forward. I'm gonna take my elbows wide so they can press on the shin gently. Inhale, press the shin back up into the form exhale release the resistance let's try that a couple more times inhale push the feet together knees press into the elbows elbows down into the knees exhale release and again Relax the shoulders, if you can go a little bit deeper. Now take your breath into the back body. Open up that space where the kidney area is and sitting atop the kidney is your adrenals. You want to breathe some life into the adrenals. 
reducing cortisol output from, from them, creating a relaxation response in the body. When we do that ably, you reduce the chance of putting on midsection weight, which, which is, um, can be really um, augmented through stress. We don't want to augment the fat or visceral fat around the belly. That's cortisol. More sleep, more rest, more breath will reduce that. And that's sort of not the way we think. We like we have to do be, be um, run more, stress ourselves out more. No, that just is going to release more cortisol, which is going to hang on to the belly fat. Little tip. Let's lower onto your back. Gently rotate the knees around. Oh, that feels good. Give me your sacrum a little bit of love. Other direction. Gently drop the knees to your left. This easy spinal twist. Looking over your right shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out. And again here, we can look at any tension holding patterns and recognize that they're there. Once we recognize it, then start to release it. Come back to center, the head and knees aligned. Plant the feet firmly into the earth. Take the heel of the hand into the crease of the hip and press until you feel the low back rise. And that, my tailbone scraping the mat and then exhale, navel to the spine and we get no space between the back and the mat. Inhale again, pelvic tilt. Exhale, tilt, low back into the mat. Twice more. And elongation of the spine. One more. Should feel really good. Bring the knees in again to the chest. And gently roll, or not roll, but allow the knees to drop gently to your right. And then your head could look to the left. Or gently roll side to side. Reduce, release, relax through the breath. And bring the knees back to center, making your way into final um, peaceful pose, integration. And the heels come to the pockets of your mat. <laughs> I want to finish this out with a fascia reset for the whole body. You plant the heels and then we'll take the toes forward and back. So there's a, a extension forward and then flexion back. The calves are elevated so the whole body can actually move. And then you can speed up the movement through the feet. This is all feet, nothing else. My heels stay in the same spot. They're not doing this. Okay, they anchor and then toe pulse. 
whole body movement. And then, and release. That's very taxing for the legs. Shake it out. And allow the freedom to flow. We are as the earth, abundant, solid, energetic, resilient, Everything we need is provided. We are as the sky, vast in potential. Like a drop of water in the ocean, we hold all the properties of the ocean in that drop. There is no difference. It's just that we have separated ourselves from the main flow or consciousness, which every now and again is good. But remember that you are a part of something larger. You are response able for yourself, no one else. You may have responsibility or be in guardianship and uh, over uh, little ones or teenage ones. But ultimately their life comes from their experiences, their growth, their mistake patterns and the way in which we approach those mistakes. Remember, Mistakes are potential for greater good. We're here for another couple minutes. Release, let go, relax. Shoulders, arms, head, torso, legs and feet. Lengthen your in-breath. Feel the elixir of breath move through the body. You exhale into the extremities. And allow for a subtle movement through the toes, the ankles, the wrists and fingers. With gentle movement, draw the knees towards you curling the arms around you and roll to one side. Still a 
um, the softness, the deep listening connection to one's own heart, mind, and purpose. In this space, acknowledge yourself for how you showed up today. And the response, able, ability to respond in a way that was loving, kind, courageous, honoring, seeing yourself as a whole person. And allow yourself to come to a seated position, gently lifting up. Hands to the heart center. Then we'll take a Ganesh Mudra. We'll slide the palms in a, a half circle going opposite ways and then click or connect hooking the fingers together. So for me, the left back of the hand is towards the heart, palm away, and the right hand is connecting into the left palm. Pulling the elbows wide, inhale. Exhale, release the resistance, inhale, pull. Widening the elbows, exhale, release the resistance. All it takes is for one of the fingers to let go and the resistance to not be there. And sometimes we're so strong in our attachment to ailments that we're unable to let go of the grip and see the possibility for what lies ahead. So as we take the Ganesha grip here, we chant the Ganesha chant. Om Gam Ganapate Namaha, Om Gam Ganapate Namaha, Om Gam Ganapate Namaha. We invoke the fearless leadership of Ganesha, the purveyor of obstacles, the remover of obstacles, to help us become less blind to what is seemingly large in front of us but allow us to back off from the perspective and reduce the obstacle to something manageable. We can move over, under, around, or through. And thus we release the grasp or tension that we hold on to and allow it to dissipate. Releasing the hands, bring them to your heart center again, Anjali Mudra. Thank you for your presence, your practice, and your deep soul beauty here. The joy is in the journey. Namaste. Thank you. Leave a comment on our Facebook page live. We'd love to hear from you. I'll look at those comments. And thank you all for joining me on YouTube. What a fabulous opportunity we have to be together. Thank you.